Hey, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us today on um, the brand new Lonnie Malone show. Uh, we have our first guest and she will be introducing herself today. We're going to be a little different today. We're going to get the, the candidate or the host or the get co-host or the guest to do most of the talking because it's one great conversation when that person is natural, funny, great personality. And today we have that in in this particular interview. So I'm looking forward to look at the shoes, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be airing out the <laughs> shoes too on these different things. So make sure you got your favorite kicks on. Um, introduce yourself, please. I am Lakita Monique Hall Wright. And what are we doing here today? Today, we're going to, it's like we just going to get to know the real Lakita, not the Lakita you see at family court. Not the Lakita you see in court taking care of cases. You're just gonna you're gonna get to know Kita. So you're a candidate. Yes. And you're running for something. Yes, I am running for Jefferson County Family Court Place Three. That's in the Birmingham Division. So tell us a little bit about what the family court, because I think for a lot of us, we don't understand what family court actually does. We think it's just you get our children and as men, you make us pay child support. Now, family court is a very diverse court. Family court does a multitude of things, whether it's establishing paternity, establishing child support. Um, until December, we did protection from abuse cases, those PFAs. We do juvenile delinquency, juvenile dependency. Truancy cases where when you don't send your kids to school, you come to family court. We do, you know, and vascals as well. So we do a multitude um, criminal non support. Those are adult cases, emancipations. Uh, we do have jurisdiction to do some adoptions, uh, a, a minor non consent abortion issues. We handle a multitude. Of things, so it's not just child support or bad kids per se. We do a whole lot of things behind some school board review. Whereas you, your child been expelled and you feel like, hey, the school didn't do their due diligence, you come file that with us. So currently, what do you do in family court? Currently, I am the chief court clerk for both the Birmingham and Bessemer divisions. I actually supervise approximately twenty-two employees between both divisions, and I split my time between both, but I primarily spend the majority of my time in Birmingham because Birmingham handles 76% of the volume that occurs between Jefferson County family court cases. So Birmingham is where you have your biggest issues. Bessemer gets more of a little snapshot. So before we go, let us go further. I like to find out the person. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll get to know the candidate because we're going to see you at these events. We're going to see you mm -hmm. doing the interviews. But let's go back to who are you? Let, let's you can do childhood. You can do yesterday. Let's let's find out more about you. Let's see personality. That's what I like to know about. I I like to consider myself that quintessential girl next door. Your round away home girl. I played with the boys. I ran track. I played softball. I climbed gates. <laughs> You climb I, gates. I still have the scar across my stomach to prove it <laughs> right now, running behind my brother and his friends. I could easily walked around, but I decided I wanted to climb the gate and got hung. So, I mean, that is the Lakita you see. I'm the one that likes to sit on the front porch and watch people watch. Yeah. I am just your everyday individual. So what do you do for fun? Literally, I, I people watch. <laughs> you can you can tell a lot about people. I am an introvert with extrovert tendencies. Mm. Say that again. I like that. I am an introvert with extrovert tendencies. Now for the for the peanut gallery, what does that mean? I really can keep myself company and enjoy me, but I don't mind going out into crowds. But when I'm in a crowd, I'm one of those that I can sink into the background, and because you're so comfortable with me, you forget I'm there. So you have a tendency to be yourself. And when I say I people watch, that's how I get to know who an individual truly is. Because when you're not paying attention to me, you're truly being yourself. So you mentioned being an athlete. Yes. 
And, you know, they said athletes don't ever retire. We just get old. That's true. So tell us a little bit about that. Give us a fun fact about your athletic accomplishments. I was all American cheerleader in high school. I cheered in college. This, I played softball through Little League. Some high school I didn't play in college. I was recruited briefly by North Alabama for softball. Um, but literally, cheering paid my way at Birmingham Southern until I decided, hey, I want to graduate. <laughs> so I cheered my, I believe, my freshman and sophomore year, and then I said, I'm tired. So family wise, are you married? Are you single kids, no kids? I am married with a blended family. I am the proud mom of four, technically. One adult, three teenagers. Like I said, blended. Yeah. Uh, as I that's, like to, that's the average American family. As I like to call them, 27. Yeah, he's 27. I think he's 27. My oldest is 27, 28. Um, we have 15 year old. And then as I like to call them, the two twins, the two 13 year olds. Ooh. Yes. Wow. So what do they think about mom? <sighs> is it boys, girls? What, what is it? Three boys, one girl. Oh, oh man. Wow. Don't, yeah, don't worry about that question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> three, yeah. Three boys, one girl. Three boys, one girl. And the girl but, is four. But they're all. It's those babies. But they're all spoiled in their own right. Like I grew up. Uh uh, what do they think about you? <laughs> you know, it's I'll what? give it to you easier. What do they think about mom and what she's doing? Because we know care. campaigns yeah. take away from family and home life. Honestly, they don't it's like they don't care. It's kind of like, oh, you run for judge? Oh, okay. And I guess because I asked for this. The kids didn't didn't ask for it. I try to keep them, you know, out the mix as much as possible. You might see us out or you might see us at a parade or something and they're there. But I try to keep them out of pictures and things like that. So, so I yeah. asked that question because mm -hmm. are you the fun parent or are you the disciplined parent? Because oh. a judge has to be both in a way <laughs> sometimes. Wow. Honestly, hmm. me and my husband were so much alike. Uh. And he tells me all the time I need to lighten up. But we are the male female version of each other. We're both no nonsense. But the kids know how far they are. I'm I'm the one that's I'm more tuned to let's get somewhere and sit down. Whereas he's more of the disciplinarian. But, but you you get it's it's that balance. That balance. They know, hey, we y'all y'all do y'all just don't you know ballers don't tap the house, don't fight each other, you know, don't get in trouble. That mm -hmm. type like. But are y'all born in the same month? Being your husband? No, I'm actually Aries. He's a Cancer, which is really uh, yes. But he's that borderline Gemini, yeah. so he doesn't dampen my spirit. Yeah. <laughs> So now that we mentioned the spouse, mm -hmm. what does he think about all this? He's very supportive. I'm talking about very typically. And you you know this. You typically, if you see me, you see him. You just don't know you see him. Yeah. He's at basically all functions, all events. If you know, unless work interferes with it, he's there. You just don't know he's there because he feels like this is your time to shine. This is your I'm just here for the support. Hmm. Hmm. Ronnie, Ronnie, I, now I'm, I'm going to go a little further into <laughs> your office or potential. Just say your win, first 90 days or whatever. I ask these questions because I had to go to family court once. Mm -hmm. And I was the plaintiff. Mm -hmm. That's very important to that the is, story. It is. But by the time I left out of there, I felt like I was the murderer. <laughs> And it was family. You see family, family. different criminals, yes. completely different. I felt like I was a murderer. I was mistreated so badly and I was trying to do what was right. I can't speak for everyone on the bench. But what I can say, we need to put the family back in family court. 
we have become very disconnected to this segment of the population that more often than not finds themselves at a disadvantage. And statistically speaking, I was once them. I mean, some people know my backstory, but they don't know my backstory. I could have easily been on the other side of the counter at family court. I was a teen mom. Statistically, I should not be sitting here. So you want to talk about that? I mean, we can. All right. I so mean, I mean, this this is, a, this, this is a get to know that, yeah. session. Exactly, because mm -hmm. I, I'm mm -hmm. looking for, if you notice in any of mm -hmm. my interviews, anything I do now, I don't really interview candidates anymore mm -hmm. because I feel like it's beginning to be cookie cutter mm -hmm. or they're part of a system and they just know they're going to win. And so they don't spend time, time with the average person anymore. So I'm looking for that person, this one diamond in the rough or someone who we can get behind and follow. And not just saying we're going to endorse and all that. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think that's a big deal anymore. I want to know somebody who is like the average this person. Person. Literally, I was that. I had my first son. I was fifteen in high school. You know, statistically, you weren't supposed to finish school, let alone go on to college, obtain a, a degree, let alone a professional degree. I have a ninth grade education. <laughs> See, so. <laughs> Statistically, so y'all making me feel kind of smart. I should have, I could, I could have, but I had support. I had, you know, that family support. You know, my mom and dad, they never let me, you know, slack on that. They allowed me to still, you know, grow and experience life, but I also had to be a mom. I grew up with my first. Like, we have this running joke between them. If I need to bury a body, that's the one he's not asking any questions, he's coming. But at the same time, I know and I, I feel like you can't sit high and look low. I am you. It's just I made it out. I beat the odds. So when I recognize it, it, it just kind of, you know, pulls on the heartstrings. And that's why I've been in my position as chief court clerk for eight years now. And in that eight years, I went from being a juvenile probation officer to being a chief court clerk part of the um, court administration team, you start to view things differently because then I was there to be the enforcer. Now I have daily interface with individuals and I hear their plight. I hear their pain. I see their anger. I hear, you know, the hurt, you know, the disgust in the system, leaving out of certain courtrooms. And that was really what pushed me out. I mean, I tell anybody, my staff will tell you, I'm like, that's why I stay behind these two closed doors. But in staying behind those two closed doors, I get face to face interaction daily, as well as telephone calls or, you know, crying. Uh, you know, my my case hasn't been heard. I hadn't got an order. There hasn't been a, um, an answer in it to my motions that I've, in, you know, these the decisions we make in family court are life changing, life altering. I'm talking about the decisions we make today affect you not only for years, but they can affect your family for decades. So let's let's look at something. I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm intrigued by what you said about being a teen mother. Mm -hmm. And yet when we look six, eight years down the road, you've graduated from college. Mm -hmm. You're starting a family now. And then we look a few more years down the road. So how long have you, first of all, first question, how long have you been involved in family court. I noticed you said you've been there in your current position for eight years. The second thing that I want to know is how did being in your circumstances shape who you are and how you live and how you plan to run your court if once you win? I've been employed with Jefferson County Commission, Jefferson County Family Court for 16 years. And I say when I walk through those doors, October 14, 2007, you're strictly for professional development. But what I received was a family and personal development. That's a true statement. Um, during that, that time, you grow, you get to know people because as a probation officer, you're actively in the community. You're in the schools. You learn these. Um, you get to know these administrators, these partners and things of this. So when I shifted. And became the chief court clerk. Now I'm really getting to interact with the people. And I, I realized I'm no different. It's just my circumstances were different. So why should I treat you any differently? You know, those who truly know me interact, you know, with me on a daily basis, they be like, hey, call Lakita. She go get it right. If not, she's going to tell you how to get it right. 
I'm there to help you, to assist you, not to hurt you. And that is my biggest thing there. Um, you know, I'm precluded from doing a lot of things because we are in the clerk's office, but they know, hey, I'm going to help you as much as I can. If not, I'm going to get, you know, point you in the right direction because that's basically what we're here for. We're here to assist. And that's what I feel we have moved away from with family court. When it comes to this election and this office, I have. I feel like we're getting outsiders that are running for the office. I'm working from the inside out. And when I say I'm working from the inside out, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm there every day. I see everything. I know the internal functions. I know what it takes to run family court and what it is in the midst of it. Not, hey, I'm going to come over here and do a case and leave. And that's why I feel like uh, with a lot of judicial seats, if you're not there on a regular basis in that court, why should you run for that seat? We need somebody who's there in the midst, in the mix. And that's just like one of my biggest pet peeves. You have to be there to understand the demographics that you're working with, because if you're not, when you get on the bench, it's kind of like, well, why you didn't do this? Why did, you're, you lack compassion, you lack empathy. And we should always have, you know, empathy. It's always empathy and families first because that's what we are here for. This is family court. We're here to rehabilitate and to create families, not tear them apart. One thing I like about that, what you're saying, is, 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 is one word keeps popping out to me is relationship. Mm -hmm. Relational, relationship. It's, it's a stressful situation coming into that court. Like I said, mm -hmm. I went before. It's stressful. You don't know what's going to happen, but you're, it's family. Mm -hmm. So you don't want nothing bad to happen to these families. That's right. But you know stuff got to be done. Mm -hmm. So to have somebody who has no personality, no empathy or sympathy for these people, it can make it even worse for them. It can make a bad experience horrible. Right? Correct. I know that in Birmingham, it's a lot of things with children. We, we're, we're now so focused on children who won this election year. Mm -hmm. And I like that because you've been doing it every day and not just election time. Correct. So we get these people when it's election time. Oh, I'm working with the kids. Doing what? Oh, I'm working with families. Okay. Are you qualified to do this job and you haven't been doing it? Do you take a case here and there? One or two cases, of, you know, every now and then doesn't make you qualified to me. That is but true. somebody who is constantly working with families and helping them and being a resource to them. Because if you notice, everybody wants to save kids, but nobody's talking to the kids. That is true. Right? That's true. But you're doing this daily. Correct. Now, let's go back to your children. What are their goals and dreams? For their life, what do they want to be in the next five years? One is purely focused on school. It's hey, I want to graduate the top of the top of my class. One is more focused on athletics. The other is more focused on hey, I want to build a computer, something like that. All of them are you know honor roll students, but their paths are kind of like in our household. It's more of we let you. We're not going to force you to do something because this is your career. This is your life. You have to do it. But we're going to put you on the path and give you every opportunity possible to be successful. It's incumbent upon you to decide if I'm going to be successful or not. That brings balance to me. Mm -hmm. Now, first, we have relationship. Mm -hmm. Now it's balance mm -hmm. because a lot of parents don't know what their kid wants to be. Mm -hmm. And that may sound crazy. But some parents may work all day. No, they don't really get to spend that bond time with their children anymore. And that's We're true. in a different life. You're knowing it. Okay. Off the wall question. Okay. Uh oh. Beach or Alaska cruise? A uh who? -huh. Beach or Alaska cruise? I always want to do Alaskan cruise, so I'm gonna have to go Alaskan cruise. Why? I feel like. There's not much you can do in Alaska, but I like the nature and the scenery of it. Now, don't get me wrong. I love a beach, but I've just always wanted to do Alaskan and Hawaiian cruise. That's like the cheapest way. I hate to say cheap. The most frugal way to see Alaska through a cruise instead of, you know, every island. So 
So you're not scared to take chances? Nah. I mean, chances are choices. Chances are lessons. You learn something. If you don't take a chance, there's no growth. You're stagnant. All right. So now, getting ready to go into your campaign. Mm -hmm. You're, 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 you have a strong relationship with the people. You are, you take chances. And what's the other one I said? Balance. Balance. And I want to talk about oh, the balance. Mm -hmm. I see, I like balance. that. Balance. But go ahead, Paul, before mm -hmm. we do that. Oh, so, first ladies, I'm sorry. Uh, somebody didn't introduce themselves, I don't think. Did they? Oh, I'm Paul. I'm the host of Second Chance, the podcast, and I'm, Really grateful for the opportunity to co-host today with my longtime friend and the one that suckered me into doing this in the beginning, Lonnie Malone. Hey, go ahead with the bounce and we're gonna here's, here's, here's what, what intrigues me. Um because normally we look at the mother as mm -hmm. the stable stability in the home. You know, when when the when the child has a, a a knee and they come home, they ain't coming to daddy, they come to mama. So what how are you? Balancing work being because let's let's be real. Mm -hmm. You've got your career. Correct. You've your mother. Correct. Your wife. Correct. Your daughter. Yes. And for whatever reason, you're a candidate. <laughs> Those are five difficult things to do individually. How are you making this balance so that nothing goes lacking or is there something going lacking? No, I have a supportive spouse. What? I lack in, he picks up that and vice versa. That, that so, matters. I mean, the household itself is not lacking, although you may be missing one piece of it. We're a unit and we operate as a unit. So, I mean, that's that's the biggest thing. That's how I find that balance. When someone you're on the bench and someone is before you. Uh, what are they? Uh, it's not a defendant or nothing. What, what do they call in your court, in family court? Well, it depends. You have plaintiffs and defendants on the adult side. As far as with the juvenile side, they really are defendants. But yeah. let's do the let's okay. do let's do um, uh, let's do children first. Okay. You have a child that has been in trouble for most of their life. What do you think of him? From the outside. When they're in front of you. When they're in front of me, typically you have to dig down into their, their history. One thing I learned as a probation officer, reality, perception is not always reality. And when I say that, sometimes kids act out because they're lacking or they need somebody to talk to or is something going on in the home. i never forget. I had a kid who shoplifting. I looked at what he was shoplifting. Yeah, you got to you have to get some consequences for this. But you were shoplifting, you know, personal hygiene products, school uniforms for your younger siblings, which that posed me to have a conversation with mom. Hey, what's going on? What kind of services can we get? Because when I said we're, we're a truly family court, we have a whole resource center. We have services available, you know, that can really wrap around the family and kind of set you up and get you on the path or, you know, at least point you in that direction. So it's not, yeah, you're a habitual offender. What's really going on in your life? Some, now don't get me wrong. Some kids are just bad, but some are, you know, acting out and you have to figure out why are you acting out and let's address the root cause. Otherwise, if we're just addressing, you know, the lapels, you're not going to fix anything. A lot of people don't understand or may not get why I'm asking certain things mm -hmm. like that is, first of all, this show would be very unorthodox. It's okay. very spontaneous. It's all that, But a lot of this, I'm also drawing a big picture because in our community, the black community, I'm going to stay there with it instead of going all over. A lot of times we feel that we're not heard. We feel that the, we're being picked on. Now, we sometimes lack accountability. Sometimes we take accountability. And I ask specifically for children because people don't realize in certain cities, let's say Birmingham, Bessemer, mm -hmm. you have some children when they go to school, that's the only time they eat. Mm 
That's true. That's time when they don't they don't have clean clothes. Mm-hmm. We had a uh, issue going on in the city about teachers needing to retire or leave. Mm-hmm. I said, but you don't tell a lot of time these these teachers are parents themselves mm-hmm. and their parents at school for the most part, right? That's correct. So I want people to realize that. To her, I said, "Smile, money, Mister Darrell Williams." <laughs> <laughs> but we got to have judges who can be sympathetic, empathetic, but also do their job at the same time. Like you said, you're going to dig down. Mm-hmm. So you're not just going to allow somebody to come in and just get over on you. No, you? You, have to, you have to be fair. But you also have to do your due diligence. And, you know, with that, you can't take everything as if it's black and white because... You know, we like to say the law is black and white, but in reality, it's a whole lot of gray. And I'm talking about various shades of it. So literally, you have to be able, most of the kids that enter the system, they have been in the system for years. And in my speech, I said we need someone that has the ability to research a physical or digital file. And that is true, because sometimes you got to go back to the, the hard file. Let me see what you first came in here as. You may not have come in here as a juvenile delinquent. You came in with dependency issues. But because through the years, things have, you know, progress. Now you're having delinquency issues. You have to really get down to the root of what is going on in this this family. And sometimes it's not necessarily the child. Sometimes it's the it's the parents. So literally it does take a village, but the village is lacking now. We have to get the village back into helping raise the kids and not look at it as, oh, well, you know, you should have did this or you should have did that. Because sometimes, you know, that familiar unit may not have the capabilities of doing it and they need that support. So we really need to put the family back in family court. Okay, so let me ask you a question. I have had the awesome opportunity and privilege to go into the uh, juvenile detention center and talk to young men and young ladies. And invariably, they say almost the same thing. Nobody cares. How do or how can or how will you change that narrative? Because they think it's us against them. Transparency. Us being the children, them being the adults. And these children, first of all, they're children for a reason. They're still children. So how can we how can you once you take the bench and I'm, I'm going to say if once you take the bench, what are you going to do differently so that children no longer feel like it's us against them and they feel like somebody really cares? Even though I have to detain you for a minute. Children need to be heard. That's mm. one of our biggest things. They feel as if they're not heard. You need to learn first. You got to listen for understanding because. You can say a whole lot without saying. OK. And I, I, lo- I love what you're saying. But people of my era, we grew up with the mantra that children, children are supposed to be seen and not heard. heard. And invariably, because mama and child are so closely. I love what you said. Mm-hmm. You're 15 years old and your son. Correct. So you grew up together. You you mm-hmm. when 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 you experienced dating issues and your son was old enough to understand that. So how do we change that narrative from the 60s? Or they can hang out. Now. Or they can hang out. So, so see, you, you know, now we have situations where mama is 35 and the son is 20, 21. And so mama and son, they're at the same club. But see, as a parent, you have to understand that you are still that parent. So you have to draw that line. You know, don't get me wrong. I love my big guy. I tell him that all the time. But we're not going to the same clubs. We're not clubbing. We can hang we can hang out together and things of that nature, but you're still my child. So it there's no clear line now. It's that what used to be clear, you know, it's kind of muddy. Mm-hmm. It's 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 dirty. You know, we have parents now to certain levels that prefer to have a child happy and be their friend than to be the disciplinary. And we have gotten away from handling discipline at home so well i'm gonna let the courts take care of it and this week everybody has to have accept their responsibility in the issues that we're currently facing as well as have some accountability you know with these because 
it's not one person's problem. It's everybody's problem because it's going on not only in our communities. It's also happening in, across, you know, the mound, over the mound, however we want to call it. It's happening everywhere. The only difference is, is that. Ours gets publicized more. There you go. All right. I know we've been here some time, so let's transition now more into the adult side of things, right? What makes you qualified to deal with adult issues, to deal with adult family issues, to to give just and fair results to adults? Are you qualified or have you experienced enough cases? Are you are you qualified? What makes you qualified? I think what actually makes me qualified is because I listen for understanding. I've worked both sides of the bench and I'm there. I have the experience not only as a chief court clerk, but also as a practicing attorney. I've whoa, 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 wait, wait a minute. So you have a law practice as well? Yes, I practice part time. When I passed the bar a decade or so ago, I was currently employed at family court. I chose to stay because I felt my impact was needed more with the kids. And that was I shortly thereafter transitioned to the clerk's office. But I chose to say because family court kind of became my passion at that time. You know, it granted, I can make if it was about the money, I can make more money in private practice, hands down. But it's the population that we serve. And I get so much pleasure out of, you know, a kid that I used to have on probation that comes back and say, hey, Miss Lakita, I'm working. I got a family. I got this. I didn't go to jail. I made it. I get pleasure out of helping those families. It's, hey, she, my, my child's mother won't let me get, you know, visitation, uh, you know, assisting you and walking you through. This is what you need to do. I never thought of myself as, you know, a servant leader until you're actually kind of pushed into the role. It's, it's the service for me. It's not the status. I'm perfectly fine behind the scenes. I'm not looking, you know, some people want to be a judge because of the status. I want to be a judge because of the service. I'm more concerned about the work that needs to be done from the bench, not the people that I'm running against or my opposition. So when is your election? Our election is March 5th this year. So that's less than what it is about eight weeks. Do you have any, you had to file as a Democrat or Republican. Do you have, are you a Democrat or Republican? I am declared as a Democrat. Uh, do you have a Republican opponent? There are no Dem Republican opponents. So. so when March 5th comes? March 5th is, uh, this is an opposed seats. Um, there are actually three of us in the race. So March 5th is very important. Um, that is the primary. Hopefully, you know, the numbers are in my favor and we can get out the primary without having to have a runoff. But if there's a runoff, I think the runoff will be sometime around April the 16th. I'm not sure if that's the correct date, but it's probably April the 16th for the runoff. But it's very important that, you know, everyone goes to the polls in bulk because everybody knows someone who's affected by issues at family court. Everybody knows someone who has been to family court. And you don't think of family court as being important. I think family court is the most important court in the county because it is the court of our future. Yes, you know, criminal court is fine. Probate court, you know, they like to call it the death court, which I don't necessarily agree with. However, family court sets up our future, literally. Say that woman, they're the court of the future? They're the court of the future. I like that. So, as I get ready to close out, I want you to give you time to think about, I want you to, I want you going to, you're going to end it, and um, I want you to tell the people why they should vote for you. I'm just going to tell the people this. Hey, thank y'all for joining us um, on Not Necessarily not necessarily Political Network. It's the new Lonnie Malone Show. And if you've seen my post, it's the most boring podcast ever yeah, created. It I say it so you don't have to. <laughs> but I enjoy uh, speaking with you. And hopefully we'll get to speak to you again um, right before the elections. 
because I want to see, mm -hmm. I love to see how a candidate yes. grows during an election. Because like the Obama say, you know, you have to build a story. And you build that story by speaking to different people and going out. And ladies and gentlemen, you, you can't ask for money, right? I cannot. Hey, but um, check her page out. And if you would like to donate, volunteer, or make calls or whatever it is for her, please check her page out at www.electhallright.com. That's H A L L W R I G H T dot com. And is there a Facebook? That uh, Facebook is Lakita Hall Wright for Jefferson County Family Court Place Three. Instagram is Elect Hall Wright. I just, I'm amazed that as a candidate, you can't ask for money. So I have to make sure as a judge, I'm learning a lot with these yes. interviews. A judge cannot ask for money. They That's cannot. the difficult part because they all need money. I don't care what you think if they're rich or not because they're lawyers and all that. Correct. They still got a life to live and take, take care of. So um, sure. Paul Littlejohn, is there anything you want to say before she give us a I, have a, I, I actually have one more question because as we've as we've so had <laughs> as we've had this conversation <laughs> as we've had this conversation and and I, I like the aspect of the new line and Malone show because it's not so much about us as hosts, yes, but it's about the people we interview as we've had this conversation, it keeps coming to my mind why you why me why you? I guess that's a perfect segment to let us know why. Why you? Because I, I am them. I am everybody that has walked through the door of family court. Except I beat the odds. When you walk through family court, as you stated, you don't know if you're going where you're coming or going. Family court should be fair. It should ensure due diligence. You should have an understanding that when you walk in, you're not going to walk out feeling defeated are beat up because nine times out of 10, those that come to family court, they have no idea how to proceed. You need someone that is going to be fair, respectful and impartial, regardless of your circumstances, regardless of your demographics or, you know, your your position in society. And because I'm there every day and because I could have easily been that individual. That's why I feel like. I'm the best candidate at this point because I live it. When I tell you I'm working from the inside out, that's what I'm doing. I'm working from the inside out. I'm not visiting family court. I live at family court. I do more than just work there. I am family court. Mm -hmm. um, Paul Lujan, um, Bear Williams said, Paul Lujan is my classmate, Parker High. I cannot go a day without somebody <laughs> saying Parker High. It just happens to be the greatest high school yes. in Parker, the city. Parker, you. She has on purple pants for Parker. I got dug it. <laughs> and, and, and gold and purple for the LA Lakers. No, yes. it's for Omega Sci Fi attorney. No, it's for the Lakers. <laughs> but no, yes. I really appreciate um, this interview. Um, I look forward to many yes. more, uh, especially if you win the seat. I have to yes. say if because we. People listen to what we're saying and they say, well, you endorsing it, but you on the show. I'm like, no. no. I had a candidate say, well, I didn't know I can come on because we thought you liked the other candidate. I said, no, that candidate reached out to us, came on to the show. That's it. And I, I implore everyone, research your candidates. Yes. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm going to plug myself. A vote for Lakita Hall, right? Is a vote for your rights. A vote for Lakita Hall, right? Is a vote for your family. A vote for Lakita Hall, right? Is a vote for our future. So March the 5th, I ask you all to let's right some wrongs and make Lakita Hall right your candidate of choice. Hey, I right. Josh, I'm not going to tell you anything you said. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Right. Um, Join us, not necessarily political, the Lenny Malone show. Um, the guest host today will be was Paul Little John. Uh, Second chance to podcast. Look us up. Second Watch chance. us when we come on. But we're looking forward yes, to it at 3 p.m. next Sunday. Check us out. We'll be back.